So my first degree was in zoology, but then I rapidly moved into the neurosciences and, and stumbled upon biological time and how important circadian rhythms, these 24-hour body clocks, are. And they're fascinating for me at a range of different levels. One is the, the, the mechanisms, what genes are involved, how they encode specific proteins, and how those proteins then ultimately feed back and generate a 24-hour oscillation. And we know that subtle changes in some of those genes can make you a morning person or an evening person. But in parallel with that mechanistic understanding, there's been an appreciation that these 24-hour body clocks play a fundamental role in essentially every aspect of our physiology. The most obvious being the sleep-wake cycle, but hormone release, our cognition, you name it, our clocks are involved at uh, essentially everything. How are these internal clocks set to the outside world? The, the, the most sort of obvious mismatch between the internal day and the external world is jet lag. And I became fascinated with trying to understand that pathway. And as a result of curiosity-driven research, we discovered that there's a, a third light sensor within the eye. So there's the visual cells, the rods and cones that give us our sense of space. But then these third receptors we, we discovered give us our sense of time. And so what I spent a lot of my, my career doing is trying to understand how those, those, those light sensing systems interact with the molecular clockwork to align the internal day with the external world. We've got drugs that can fool the clock, it's seen light. Now why that's important is that if you've suffered major visual loss or if you've lost your eyes, then the clock is ticking, but it's then drifting through time. And what these drugs will be able to do is give back a sense of time to the time blind. Not just people with major visual defects, but we've worked a lot on psychiatric illness, such as schizophrenia, neurodevelopmental conditions, Alzheimer's and dementia, where the sleep-wake cycle is utterly smashed. And we hope that these drugs will also be able to stabilize the sleep-wake cycle in those individuals as well. One of the main challenges for me is because the field dips in so broadly across the biomedical spectrum, across fundamental neuroscience. <laughs> I find it difficult to focus about what I want to do, which is part of the fun, because I can bounce into the lab, I work with these brilliant young people, and we really sort of study everything. Um, so, so our strategic aims are, you know, trying to understand the fundamental mechanisms that generate and regulate sleep and circadian rhythms. Then the second set of questions is, well, what happens to these systems in, in, in disease? How do they fail? And, and what are some of the societal pressures that make these 24-hour 24 24 timers fail? The third is, what can we do about it? You know, can we then correct those circadian rhythm and sleep-wake disruptions? And then the fourth, of course, is to disseminate this knowledge to the broadest community. At one end, of course, the medical profession, trying to improve clinical practice, but also care, uh, carers and, 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 and patients need to know about this fundamental neuroscience and, and hopefully can use this information to uh, improve their health and well-being. So I'm a fundamental neuroscientist and I wanted to be in an environment where I could interact with others and take our fundamental knowledge, our new and emerging data, work with colleagues so we could translate this quickly. And I have to say, I don't think I would still be in science if I hadn't come to Oxford because what gets me out of bed in the morning is the excitement of doing the science. And I'm surrounded by, 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 by similar enthusiastic in, individuals. And um, it, most of the time, it's an awful lot of fun. Many of us are taking the science and finding ways in which we can use that science to improve health and well-being. So in my case, uh, it's the development of new drugs that will stabilise and regulate abnormal circadian cycles. And, and just to give you some sense of why that's important, working with parents with children with neurodevelopmental conditions where the sleep-wake cycle is utterly smashed, those individuals can't take uh, full opportunities of, of, of their educational experiences and of course because of their disturbed sleep they're, dis they're waking up the, the entire family. So I think there's a real need in many different sectors uh, for the consolidation of circadian rhythms and the sleep-wake cycle and so I think that's what I really want to do for the last sort of um, part of my career. Because the field is so diverse and because it fits into cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, you name it, 
What we don't have is a critical mass of researchers who are embedded within those, those, those areas of medicine. And what I'd like to see is early career scientists going into uh, psychiatry, cardiovascular disease and the other disciplines with, uh, with, with, with a knowledge of circadian rhythms and how circadian rhythms can be used to enhance treatment. So it's building critical mass, uh, both from the fundamental side, but also taking those scientists and embedding them within, within the clinical disciplines. You have to be enthusiastic. You have to love what you're doing. Science is not easy but the rewards are immense. We can genuinely make a difference. And so uh, my advice would be to make sure you're doing the thing that really excites you and that you find utterly fascinating. And I think I feel privileged that I've found that groove, that niche. So I, I do wake up most days feeling very enthusiastic and very excited about the science.